Good evening. I'll call the meeting to order Monday, March 7th, 2016, Saline County Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, first item up is to consent the agenda for tonight's meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda as stated. Move second. It's been properly moved and seconded. We approve the agenda as printed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Next item is the approval of the minutes of the last meeting. Any changes to the minutes or comments on it? If none, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the minutes. Uh, minutes. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. We approve the minutes of the December 7th, 2015 meeting as printed. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two, I'll turn it over to Mr. Neal. Uh, before I start with our annual construction plan review, I just want to point out this is our last meeting for Dwayne Clarity and Mike Wilson. They term limited out, so it's been a pleasure to have you here for more than two years serving Saline County, and I think we're going to miss you on this board. So please feel free to come in and volunteer for any other. <laughs> it, sorry. Microphone off there. Volunteer for anything. We always have some openings somewhere and can always use good people. Um, with that, we do have a quorum easily, so I'm not going to subject you to the annual review and training. You're welcome to get up and leave anytime you feel like it. We're not going to hold anything against you because you've done your service here. <laughs> Mike, you have anything you want to say? Uh, well, I'd just like to say that Duane and I came on this commission the same time in December 2003 and we've been on more than 12 years and uh, in years past there was no uh, t term limits but recently the county commissioners have decided to have those and by the way you know years ago some of you may have known uh, was it was it Pete Peterson Chet. The oh Chet yeah he's a farmer in the county and he was a member of this for 27 years continuously. So that was quite a record. And uh, we've had a lot of good applications over the years. Um, oh, uh, housing projects. And, but I've noticed in recent years, ever since the 2008 recession, we haven't had a lot of meetings. You know, in, re in recent years, we only meet maybe once every three months. And before that, we met almost every month. We had some kind of an application. So yeah. that's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, and I'll reiterate, it has. It's been an honor. It's been a privilege. I think we've worked with four directors mm -hmm. in our time frame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's been an honor. It's been a privilege. Um, so um, hope we did a good job. We did our best. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's always great to help the community out. And I think that is most important you know, to represent the community as well. So so with that, I guess if we're just going to have open discussion, I think I will say farewell, pick up my paycheck on the way out. Right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> if Ken, it's just going to be discussion. Ken can take over adjourning the meeting because the rest is discussion and That's right. what the planning commission will be doing. And elected while you were gone last yeah. week. <laughs> and okay. we'll I'm be talking saying, about... a good campaign. <laughs> we will be talking about appointing officers. Normally we do that in March. Um, we're going to talk about it in May. I'm out of town in April, so there will be no April meeting. So I'm going to use that time to get as many volunteers or at least uh, expression of interest and see, give the commissioners a good choice, a good selection to uh, fill in the empty seats there. Okay. So in May, we will probably appoint the new chairman. Um, everybody can hide for that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> OK, good luck to each and all of you. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Well, I'd, I'd like to speak for everyone. I think just thank you for Mike and Dwayne. You've helped us learn a lot as we've progressed through the ranks here. So thanks a lot. Okay. Where's my paycheck? Man? <laughs> <laughs> it's in your car. <laughs> okay. Annual review. Every year we review our comprehensive plan and our zoning code to see if there's any changes we want to bring about. Um, is the comprehensive plan still working? Is the zoning code still working? And what we're looking for is just discussion. If there's something you think needs to be fixed, this is a good time to bring it up and we'll start the process. 
Uh, basic vision, I'm, I'm paraphrasing a lot of our comprehensive plan to save some time. Don't develop over the farmland, don't develop in floodplains, it's obvious, and try to make sure development happens in an appropriate location. Any kind of density, we want to push towards the cities. Uh, some of the goals, expanding home occupations. This is one we're going to talk about later as a zoning code change. Uh, support agritourism, and generally, and again, like I said, I'm paraphrasing, but make farming easier. What can we do for the farming community to make their life a little easier? Uh, in the urban areas, development, develop zoning and subdivision standards near the city. Basically, we want to let the city grow how it wants to grow, and we don't want to impede that. Uh, try to get some joint review processes with the city so that they have a little more say of what's happening in their backyard. Uh, that cell tower that we did over at the old Elks Club is a good example of that, where it's right on the border of the city, and <laughs> not everybody wanted that. For the uh, bombing range, we want to sometimes set up something to transfer development rights away so that we don't have any major development over by the bombing range. You'd be surprised. Somebody will propose it someday. Uh, for transportation, we want to minimize development along earthen roads. Right now, we just do that through a policy. There's no strict regulation. Uh, some of the work we've done over the years, hard to read my own numbers there, but <laughs> as far as permits, it's about 92 permits that we did this year. Little below the average, but you have to take that with give and take, about 10 permits or so. And last spring was a lot of rain, and that's when we do a lot of permits, typically. Nobody's going to build when the ground's soggy. Uh, this is where permits are happening in the county. It's pretty much the same as every time. We've had a little bit more um, in this area, east of Country Club, and a little bit less down in the Mentor and Assyria areas. For some odd reason, we had a few more out by Gypsum. And you should almost never see too many in this area. There's a bombing range out there. Uh, there's the bombing range. This area is pretty remote as far as development. That area you'll typically see a lot because there's road access, lots of development up there. Uh, anything around the city, you'll see lots of permits in that area. Um, moving on to code changes, I've brought this up to the county commission. They're looking forward to hearing something from you, so we'll have some proposals coming up. Part of the discussion is how you want to do this and uh, when you want to do it. We're looking at home occupations. We want some more clarity on what is and isn't a home occupation. Typically, when you talk about accounting or a, a law office or something, somebody can do that in the next spare bedroom of their house and nobody knows, and that's easily approved. When you're talking county home occupations, we can do a little bit more because we're talking three acres of land as a small piece of property. So if somebody wanted to do carpentry work out of their garage and keep it in their garage where it's out of sight, that might be an acceptable home occupation. And that's the kind of thing we need to discuss and make sure there's clarity. A little less of my, my discretion, a little more clarity of exactly what we're looking for. Um, the other part is working on sign codes. I know we did this recently, but our Supreme Court just passed a new ruling, and the way that we handle signs is considered, well, at least my opinion, is not meeting the Supreme Court's ruling. They want content-neutral sign language. Um, I'll show you in the next pictures what this means. We regulate signs by function. Well, that sign's for real estate. That sign's for political advertising. And you can have political signs during the political season, and they should only be so big and out of the road. Something simple. And it's really not a problem in Saline County. Um, for example, the difference, you look at these signs, they're obviously political signs. You can look at these, they're obviously real estate signs. We don't happen to regulate real estate signs in the county, but I'm giving you examples. Um, this is what we would call a nameplate sign. It just announces the name of your ranch, your farm, whatever. And some of the things we're looking at, what the court's looking at, the way that you know this is a political sign, you read the sign. If you have to read the sign to regulate it, you're be regulating based on content. So we have to get rid of the term political sign and just generically call it a free speech sign. So we might give extra property owners extra signs during political season, but we won't judge the content of that sign. 
Um, with nameplate signs, I'll give you a great example. One of the things, these are extra things I want to change. We allow two square feet. That's about two sheets of paper. That is more than two square feet. And it should be allowed that way. So little changes like that that make, Tom? Why? Why do they have a regulation like this? I don't know. There needs to be a regulation for any type of sign. Why? Just to say that we don't have, I want to avoid this. I don't want to see complete clusters and things that will degrade somebody's property values. But to basically declare, you know what, if you want, I consider nameplates free speech. And I make a difference between free speech and commercial speech. But when it comes to free speech, my attitude is mm, do what you want. Just don't, don't overload the yard like this, but do what you want. Then here again, I'm going to come back to property rights. If that's in the country, how many people are going to see it? What's the odds? Just think about it. What are the odds of that ever happening outside the city? And that's just it. That's what we're going to have to talk about on these signs. What's the limit we want to allow? Or not. And the problem is, if you don't have a regulation, you can treat it two ways. You can say it's just not allowed, or you can treat it as a free-for-all. I'd rather just say, we're honestly admitting it's a free-for-all. Go do what you want. Or put some limits on it, whatever is appropriate. But that's, you can see it's going to be a hard discussion. Um, but for the zoning code, for the comprehensive plan, if there's anything you're interested in advancing or doing, if there's any other code changes that you think we need to do. I've got another question come up. You I said there a while ago, comprehensive plan is supposed to be comprehensive for everybody involved in the county, correct? As much as we want to put into it. Okay. I want to ruffle feathers, but why do farmers have a privilege over anybody else? Uh, they're no more important than the milkman or the truck driver going down the freeway or anybody else. We can shut the trucks down for four days and we'd all starve to death. That farmer could be shut down for two months and we'd never know it. Now think about it. We got those guys on a pedestal. We can't do anything with protecting their property. We're suspending our property because it takes care of them. I've heard on the radio that the income from the farming in Kane County is down to about fourth or fifth as far as the deal. Uh, we don't have any special deals for the railroaders. We don't have any special deals for any other occupation here. And since this is comprehensive, which takes in the whole population of the county, I think we're being very discriminatory on who we put on a pedestal and who we don't. And that, that's just it. When you create a comprehensive plan, it's the community that gets together and sets the values. They did this years ago. And the highest values were placed on agricultural land and agriculture uh, industry. And it might not be. And that's something, if you want to bring that up again, we can start a comprehensive plan amendment to relook at where we're going to focus. The idea is where to focus county investment for the most part. Do we want to focus more investment on industry, farming? In farming, I consider an industry. Okay, we're it's talking about both sides of the mouth. I think it's like 11 or 15 bridges, correct me if I'm wrong, or bridges out in the county. If we're taking a farmer and putting him up on a pedestal, yet we won't support him by putting a bridge in, and he has to drive halfway around the world to get to town. I think we're speaking out of both sides of our mouth. If we're going to take care of the farmer, I think we need to take care of him all the way, fix his bridges, fix his roads, and make it good for him. Now then, the rest of us aren't going to get anything out of this deal except to help the farmer out. But at, at any rate, we need to, we need to, if we're going to take care of the farmers, I think we need to take care of them 100% and not just say, well, you're going to take care of you over here, but we're not going to take care of you over here. That comes down to the problem of the, it goes up to the next level to the county commission. Exactly. Where this is a plan. We all have a plan for our life for whatever. It's where you're going to spend the money day to day, and sometimes that gets derailed. Sometimes all kinds of things happen. Mm -hmm. As far as land use and value, when a, if a zoning case comes up, we're going to value the agriculture over residential, for instance. We'll probably value agriculture over industry to some cases. It depends what it can provide for the community. And we have to look at those on a case-by-case -case basis as they come in. When you're talking individual bridges, 
it's almost impossible to talk about one bridge at this location because then we really have to look at how many people, you're talking a million dollars to repair a bridge and it affects one person. Great for that one person, but can we repair a different bridge? Might cost a little <coughs> bit more, but affects a lot more people. And that's where the county commission, that's why I don't want to be an elected official. They make those choices and they're hard choices to make. But I'm right with you, I would like to support, because agriculture is a strong value in this community, I would like to continue supporting that. I think we ought to take a look at it. Uh, we need to do a study on who brings in the most money to the community. Uh, I found out recently that residential properties will sell for a whole lot more than acres of wheat land. Uh, so where is the value lying? We're wanting to keep the family farm together until it comes up to they need to do something for their children. And I think it's wrong for this man here to have a, a, a plot of land and can't give his kids 10 acres to build a house there and his kids 10 acres to build a house over here because we've got all these rules and regulations against it. It's his property, his children. If he wants to keep it a family, that's his business. If he wants to do whatever, he needs to sell. His wife has a heart attack, they have a bad car, they have a bad streak of farmland, he needs to sell 20 acres for a guy to put a house on to get himself out of debt, that's his business. I don't think it needs to be run across us or anybody else. We're back to property rights again. And, and I see these rules and regulations as being hindered. The point I'm wanting to bring up now is we talk about this, we talk about the money, there's no money for the bridges, there's nothing here, nothing there, but yet this is what's standing in the way. The county can't bring in any money because we've got the rules and regulations in the way. If we have more people coming into the county to make, set up a, build a trusses or do whatever, there's gonna be a, a factory there or whatever. We're protecting farmland that's maybe gonna bring in, figure 100 bushel of wheat, $3, $4 a bushel, that's $400 an acre once a year. There's not a business around here going that can't make more than that building trusses or building whatever. Uh, that's what's going on in this thing. What, how long did you say this been in effect? Comprehensive plan, probably since 92, I think. Yeah. Well, I heard uh, the other day that uh, Salina, Salina had the same population that had grown 3,000 people in the last 50 years. Now, something's in the way. Something's in the way. Rural development. Exactly. We are a rural location in the middle of America, we're not the Sun Belt. We're fortunately not the Rust Belt, they're losing population. Detroit has gone from a million something down to I think 250, 500,000. Industry is moving from that area and it's moving down to Atlanta, Phoenix, San Diego, the Sun Belt. We don't have the statewide economic policies to make Kansas grow. Kansas City, that area, has the policies in place we're too far out of the main metropolis to make that kind of growth happen. We typically grow at 1%. When you look at agriculture, I believe agriculture overall in Saline County is number four or five. You don't look at an individual farm. One farmer makes enough money to survive and feed his family well, I hope. As an industry, it is a multi-million dollar industry in Saline County because that's what keeps those grain elevators operating that's what keeps a lot of the stuff running through our town. That provides some of the economic development advantages that we need to hopefully land another factory like Phillips. What we want to avoid is scattered development within the county where it's going to cost more money to serve that development. We want to make sure that development stays closer to cities where water and sewer is available. Because if we start building out in the middle the next thing we're going to have to do is improve roads all the way out there, which comes down to taxpayer dollars spent on something that probably would have been smarter to bring in closer. You come from uh, Central, you come from uh, what, Spring something? Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're managing somehow. They're managing, and that's all good dirt, good farmland there, you know that. It's decent farmland because it's well irrigated. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's, uh, that's what I'm saying, and boy, they're going like crazy are going like crazy. So there, there's examples after examples. The San Joaquin Valley in California, some of the richest farmland in the world. It's going like crazy. 
and they do what? Where the money's at. They do what the money's at. Nobody's protected. And so I think uh, what I'm wanting to say here free enterprise, open up the doors, let free enterprise work. And I think it has a lot to do with this planning and zoning, the comprehensive plan that's putting the cuff on our people in the county to keep our county from growing because nobody can be creative. Nobody can say, man, I think I can put a factory right over because we've got to jump through all these hoops. We've got a comprehensive plan in front of us. We've got to jump through all these hoops to get it done. And they said, we'll just go down the road to McPherson. Oh, McPherson's really sitting on their hands, aren't they? It's moving like crazy down there. They have a natural resource called gas. Uh, they, got, they, got a, they got a city that's on the ball, too. Gas does help economic right. development Don't incredibly. Argue Don't argue that. But with us, trust me, every town, every county, well, I can't say every county because not every county is advanced enough to have a comprehensive plan, but every town out here will have one. It's the same, honestly, the bigger the city, the more hoops you jump through to get development to happen. And those cities can make it happen. We are a lot less regulated than those bigger cities. It's just the economic market is not here to make the growth happen that we want. I do agree, though, that we need to be as open to other development as we are farming. And if we our plan is totally centered around agriculture, maybe it does need to be relooked at. There are portions of our plan that discuss bringing in factories, bringing in commercial development. So when that happens, what we're going to look at is, does this take up farmland? It might, but does it take up farmland out in the middle of nowhere, or does it take up farmland on the edge? Is, and this is what this planning commission will have to look at and what the county commission will have to look at. Is this a net gain to the community? By, we have to recognize we will be losing farmland to do this. But if that industry, I'm just going to pick on Phillips because they're the biggest industry in town, but if that industry is bringing in a few hundred jobs, I would generally take that as a gain, provided they're not out in the middle of nowhere where we have to spend so much in taxes to get the resources that they need. Well, I know for a fact, because I heard other guys about that putting a thing together, there was a deal going on last year sometime or another that the railroads are going to have an intermodal uh, unloading and loading deal here in the central part of the United States with two interstates. They didn't even look at Salina. They went to Concordia. They went to Belleville. They went all over the place. They didn't even look at Salina because they knew they were going to run into problems. They actually did look at us up by the uh, about that long. grain elevators. I've had to do a few, little bit of the work on it. Yeah, but they, they did. I don't know how it ever settled out. I don't know, but the point being that we've got a, a very unique situation with two interstates going north, south, east, west, and we're not monopolizing on it. And, uh, and I think that there's an opportunity there for everybody that they can, these families can keep their kids around. But anyway, oh I, yeah. I'll, I'll be quiet. You guys. No, I think a lot of that, and you're, you're talking about the right thing. We need some more economic development opportunities. Unfortunately, the comprehensive plan doesn't put a lot of control into the economic development. Yeah, and I, I haven't heard it. Yeah, I don't want to point fingers. I think, I think maybe more of the problem is inside the city limits. <laughs> Not in our county. Well, we both need to work yeah. together to get these, because if Salina gains, we gain. That's all there is to it. Well, if we gain, Salina gains. Yeah. yeah. It, it goes both ways. Exactly. It, it, but you're right. There, it, we do look strongly at any economic development opportunity, and we try everything we can to get those businesses to locate here. It's just a matter of what they're looking for. Well, is, is the commission suggesting that maybe we need to look at our comprehensive plan and reevaluate our mission and vision or look at some different options to how we like to I would like to I'd like to open the thing up I really would but I'm just one person and I spoke and I might be crucified in the morning for speaking that <coughs> farm is not the only the only person in town that employs people and but uh, uh, I, I really feel that way I feel like the verbiage might need to be changed because almost every sentence he said about the plan was agriculture this, preserve farmland, agriculture. Agri so mm -hmm. I think some verbiage could make it seem more welcoming to other industry to consider Saline County. Yeah. So ha has it been, been looked at comprehensively like this since it was put in place? 2005 was the last comprehensive review that we opened up everything 
and went through drafting an entire new comprehensive plan. So that's been 11 years. Doesn't seem that and long. It might be time to, to do that again. I mean, we may not change anything. It's not. And that's I, but at least we'll look at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't heard of a lot of <coughs> industry aiming towards <coughs> county property that it, they're going to prefer city properties yeah. because the city has water and sewer that they need to do. And, uh, and I tax mean, breaks. The city can offer some tax breaks. We can only offer a uh, property tax incentive, the same the city can. I have uh, 40 acres that you can almost throw a ball between Menards to there and it's in the county. Right. So where does the right. county go? I mean, it's right here. That's true. That's true. But, but probably he would allow it to that to be developed if somebody wanted to. No, no, there's rules to keep us from doing that. Oh. So, yeah. So, that that's what we as taxpayers, and I'm talking we're in the county, uh, we're going to end up paying the taxes when they build this new gym and stadium stuff down here because they're going to raise their sales tax, which we all buy our groceries and everything in Salina. So it's going to cost us all. We're not going to get it vote on it or anything else, but it's still going to cost us. It is going to vote. For just for that, that little portion of the point seven five sales tax will go to vote. Yeah, but we don't get to vote in the county. Well, that's true. That's true. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, but it's still going to cost us. And I would just like to just get the thing opened up and and the, the reduce some of this stuff, uh, rules and regulations to where a, a, a business might want to come in and say, well, yeah, I'll look at all this land. <laughs> we could do this or we could do that. You have, you have to remember the first step. The comp comprehensive plan is not the regulation. It's just policy. It's what we, for instance, when we come in with a rezoning and a company like Phillips comes in and says, I want to turn this into industrial property. We're going to bring that to the commission here. And I'm going to make a recommendation based on that comprehensive plan. What I'm going to look at is there are points in that comprehensive plan that discuss the value of business. So don't think that it's entirely left out. So I'm going to put those in there for you to say, well, our comprehensive plan says we like these things. It's business. It's jobs. These are good things. At the same time, recognize that w this company is going to eat up a quarter section of prime farm ground, which we want to preserve as much as we can. We don't want to chip away at that. And then we'll, more important to me is things like roadways. Well, this, you know, I, I always pick on Phillips because they are a county property. And it is right along 9th Avenue. There's a nice paved road that provides traffic in and out of that place. I'm not too worried about the traffic out there. But if you go off, I don't know, out towards Gypsum somewhere, well, now we're going to have to pave some roads. Realize that that is taxpayer dollars, unless the developer wants to do it. Yeah. And that's where you have to make that judgment call. And that's why... You as volunteers and the elected officials, the county commission, it's a hard job to make that call, checks and balances and pros and cons, do we want to do this? That's all the comprehensive plan does, is provide guidance. The zoning code itself will provide the regulations. And for the most part, what the zoning code will do is allow for commercial development. As soon as you change it to industrial, it, the zoning code is pretty permissive. It doesn't allow for as much on residential development. So if you want to start building a three acre lot subdivision, that actually gets looked at harder than industrial or commercial. By zoning laws or by our comprehensive plan? By the zoning laws and the comprehensive plan. Okay. But it sounds like we're talking about two different pieces. The comprehensive plan kind of sets a strategy. But right. The zoning is the actual regulations. That right. Define and what those I would not, are. this is my professional end, I do not recommend changing zoning without having a comprehensive plan that says this is part of our plan, this is why we're doing it. And what we can do, I'm going to throw out suggestions. Normally when you do a comprehensive plan, if you want to do an overhaul, we bring in the public, we have a lot of open meetings, not with the planning commission, just open house meetings with the public to set values and goals and to make sure that those sound right. Then we bring that to the planning commission, so that you can agree or not. Or so we could have we could have a public forums or, or meetings here where they could come in and say what they would like to see in the conference. It would be several meetings. Oh, good, good, good. And good, good. that's one way to do it. And if we're going to go comprehend complete overhaul of something like that, that's my recommendation: is to make sure that you have several meetings, 
it, it's an endless process, but it gets a good product in the end. What we can do, and if it helps the Planning Commission, we can go through the comprehensive plan to look at each piece and see how that affects, and we can open up parts that, so maybe the agricultural part, yeah, we're generally okay with, but we want to see more commercial. So we can open up that one part, get the public in here, get some voices onto what we want to see on commercial, and then just amend that one part. So it's not always the, you don't want to throw out the whole plan if it's not the whole plan. Sometimes it's just a piece. And honestly, I don't care either way. But if you want, we can set up some meetings to go over a more in-depth review than uh, what I normally do. And uh, then... Does the commission have any uh, other comments on that? Yeah, you're, you're all, put all your wrist orders right there. Any other comments? Or? In your opinion, do we have enough protections built in now that we could have that flexibility that he's requesting. If a company comes in, it's basically your recommendation. I'm going to give you a recommendation, and I'm just picking on Phillips because they're there. But let's say somebody wants to locate. There's a couple of prime pieces that the Chamber of Commerce keeps trying to pitch for companies right next to Phillips. Mm -hmm. They do require a rezoning. And every time we meet with a company, I am happy to say we will have to rezone this to industrial. And I look at those properties, granted it's farm ground right now, but my recommendation would be to move forward with industrial zoning because it's right next to the city, it's got plenty of roadways, it's got water, it's got sewer, it's got electrical power. It has what those things need. And a business of that size would definitely be a gain to the community over the farming. Besides, the farmer wants to sell the land, mm -hmm. so I can't really fault them there. The bigger thing is I just want to make sure we're not allowing everyone to have a little piece of the county. It's one thing to say, yeah, my son wants to split off 10 acres. Everything I can do to make that happen, we make that happen. It's another thing when you start splitting off an acre here, an acre there, and everything's chiseled away. It's less about the farming, which is being chiseled away. It's the roadways that are increasing traffic increasing taxes. I've got to say something, David. I've heard since I've lived in Kansas, I, every, everybody in Kansas says, where our kids are leaving, our kids are going somewhere. If he can't give his kid 10 acres out there so his kid can stay there and farm or work in town or have a job, our kids are going to Kansas City. They're going to go to Wichita. They're going to go to Oklahoma City. Yeah. Everybody wants your kids to stay here, but yet we as a zoning commission or a comprehensive plan won't let them do with their property that they probably got passed down through their grandfather, we're keeping them from letting them kids live on that property. And that's just as wrong as the sun coming up in the west. It's just wrong. And, and I don't know why there is such rules. I'll, I'll tell you part of that. I think agriculture got themselves in that problem. They asked for that. It's a give and take. Years ago, you know, if they saw houses moving out from town, they wanted to stop that. And but they asked for that rule, and now it's probably... It's got to come back and bite them, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, any time you ask for a government rule, it usually bites you in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell everybody, you don't want government to solve your problems. Yeah. 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 But that's exactly it. If I could make the rule that, well, if it's a farmer, and if it's family, then sure, split the land. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, where do we stop the splitting of the land? And then you get everybody yeah, moving yeah. out... Let's go back to the, what I said. It's not our business. It's their land. Unfortunately, it is Why? because the roadway next to it. I'll give you a great example. We allowed a development around the landfill. Um, unfortunately, you're out there, yeah, I believe. I but there's it. several developments out there. Once we allow those things, when enough people move into an area, they start demanding more services. Those services are paid by your tax dollars. Their tax dollars also. It's everybody's. There's probably more and tax dollars created there in that one little area than there is the other half of the county. But why should the people up in Big Valley pay for your road? The same reason we all pay for that I-70 out there and the other I-70 down there. I, it's, a, it's an argument depending on where you live. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to benefit and somebody's going to lose. Yeah, people, and people live up. Uh, here in town don't like paying for our roads either. 
Well, no, they don't, but they yeah. everybody gets to yeah. chip in their part to the county budget. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, what ends up happening, if you allow too much development, there becomes an increased demand for service. And that increased demand for service will be taken care of through tax dollars and bonds. Well, I think, and I think, I think we're paying for it anyway because our appraisers keep going up. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's the, the money's there. They're spending it elsewhere. That's what the problem is. They're not spending it on the roads and stuff. That argument has to go to the county commission because yeah, now you're talking I where to spend. <laughs> well, it seems like we're in agreement or, or some are in agreement to have a look at the comprehensive plan. To hash it out internally right here, right now, it doesn't seem to be the time to be and if you want, we making, can making our points, I don't think. Yeah, if you want, we can break it into sections <laughs> so that we can look at different sections. That seems to make a lot more sense. And then me. make a final decision of what we want to open up, whether it's the whole thing or an individual section. I think it'd be educational, too, with new people coming on to the commission. Probably. We need, what, three or four more? Um, at least two. And a couple of you will be reappointed if you're all willing to serve still. But if that mm. sounds okay, um, I can set something up for May to have a see how much of the comprehensive plan we can look at. So we'll just go through it in pieces, looking yeah, at the different areas. Do you think, or, uh, do you think there's areas that don't need messing with, and other areas that do need messing with? Probably, because okay. there's when you look at all the sections, I don't think I have them all listed out here. Uh, You've got sections on transportation policies, which sounds like that's something we want to talk about. We have policies on the Smoky Hill weapons range. I think we're all pretty much in agreement to make sure, I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm, I'm just assuming things here, but we want to keep the Smoky Hill weapons range there and free from overdeveloping, which is generally what the conference plan, and we'll open it up and take a look at it. Um, urbanized areas, how we want to support or limit development or what we want to do around so that the city can have a little more say in their backyard. Um, and it's not just Salina, you're also talking Asaria and Gypsum, there are other cities. David, uh, is, the four, is the comprehensive plan a 400 page uh, book or is it two or three pages or, uh, you know? A good hundred pages probably. Well, it seems it to me like between now and the next meeting or whenever we're talking about that perhaps uh, each individual commissioner could get that. It is online, and I'm more online. It's, it's online. online. I can provide a copy if anybody wants it. Just send me an email, and I'll print out a copy. And like I said, it's and maybe we can discuss this yeah. at another day to see if you want to take them. Like I said, we're not meeting in April, so you've got a good month and a, <laughs> a couple months to go through and read that. And just re remember that these are recommended policies. They are not enforceable laws. And then it, we can meet in May and then discuss how we want to open this up, if we need more in-depth review, if we need what the Planning Commission needs. So we don't need a motion on this? We don't need a motion. If everybody... Everyone agree with that direction? In that case, okay. I am holding it to you to have fun reading that plan. Feel free to call me if you have questions about it or stop by. And if you need me to print a copy, just get, send me an email or call me so I can print it out before you get there. Okay. And then May, we'll talk about it some more. Um, as far as zoning codes, uh, where is it? Come on now. Yeah, my computer. There we go. So far on the zoning codes, we were just going to talk about signs and, sorry, this thing's not working right now. Uh, we were going to talk about signs and home occupations. What I would recommend is bring up one topic at a time so that you can focus on that topic and we're not confusing one thing with another. They are two complete separate subjects, but it's easier to focus on one at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I'll recommend in May, we will discuss it. I'll present a draft code, we can make some changes to it, and then we'll have that as a study session. And then, let's see, it would be uh, June, we'll actually have a vote on the home occupation. I'm, I'm assuming you want to work on home occupation first, because that sounds good. Yeah, there's no need to work on one over the other. And then July, work on the uh, sign codes, and then August, get those sign codes 
get a recommendation. And then in May, like we talked about, we'll go over the comprehensive plan and see what we need. Okay. If that sounds like a good plan for everybody. Plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything else on item two then? Uh, that's it. Okay. So item three, annual oh. training. Yep. Every year I like to give you a little bit of uh, just annual training. It's the usual that I give everybody. The rules for open meetings, because this is a judicial body, don't talk about the case. If somebody wants to talk to you about the case, just tell them you have to, you know, please come to the meeting and tell me about it there. That way everybody can hear it. You're not a sole judge. It takes the entire board. If you do talk to somebody about the case, disclose it. When you get here in the and it's time for the meeting, all you have to do is say, I talked to uh, Joe at the grocery store and they wanted to complain that there was too much traffic for this project. Just wanted to say that. And now everybody has the same information that you do, so it's a level playing field. Uh, making a decision for Kansas, anytime you make a decision on zoning, there's a court case called the Golden Rules. It's uh, Overland Park and Golden. We look at the character of the neighborhood, the zoning and uses of properties nearby. That's basic stuff that you don't want to put too many houses next to a nuclear waste dump. <laughs> it, it, I say it obviously, but it gets touchy sometimes. Uh, suitability of the property. If you can't build residential and they're asking for commercial, then why would you restrict it to residential? It uh, goes the other way around too. If something's commercial, let it go residential. The extent to which removal of restrictions will detrimentally affect nearby properties, we kind of touched on it a little bit. If you need road improvements, if you need other things, or I if this is somehow a nuisance property or a nuisance use, you can talk about those uh, issues. Uh, length of time the subject property has remained vacant. Here, agriculture is considered a valid zoning. It's, it's a valid land use. It is being farmed. So it's not like it's vacant. My life in Phoenix, that piece of dirt over there, it's not being farmed. It's a piece of dirt. The farms are out somewhere else. So that is vacant land. And you'll see it around, around town, you'll see vacant land. So if it's vacant, unused land, and it has been sitting that way for a long time, obviously it's not being farmed. And if it could be, it would be used that way. What should we do with it then? Is this a good use to do that? Um, relative gain to public health, safety, and welfare based on the destruction of value of the plaintiff's property as compared to the hardship imposed. Basically, it's what we've been talking about. What does the community gain versus what does the community lose? Um, professional opinion. Professional opinion does not stand alone. So you cannot just say, well, Dave said it was a bad idea or a good idea. You can't stand on that. You need to have other things but my opinion will support a court case over your decisions. And then compliance with an adopted comprehensive plan, again, that does not stand alone. That has to be supported by the first six. So you can say something like, and I'm going to use Tom's nightmare here and uh, pick on agriculture again. You can end up saying we don't want the new factory because it's detrimental to agriculture. I'm hoping you're going to find a way it's detrimental to agriculture. And we have a comprehensive plan. We have a reason why that works. Or it can go the other way. We want the industry because, and you can ignore the comprehensive plan and go that way. Hopefully that gets a little understanding of what your decision comes along. Uh, what else I got? Come on. Wrong way. There we go, making a motion. Um, there's two ways to make a motion. You can move to approve something or you can move to deny something. I typically recommend making a motion in a positive into approval because if you say yes, then it's done. You've set conditions, you've made your findings, it's done. If you say no, then it's denied. The case is over. So even if you know you want to vote for no, it's better to <laughs> say, do we want to approve this? and everybody say yes or no, and we're done. You can also specifically move to deny a project. If it's denied, then it's denied. 
if it's not, then it's not approved. So basically it comes down to, if you're saying, uh, I always make fun of this, but who wants to eat at Olive Garden for lunch? If you're saying, if everybody says yes, then yes, we're going to Olive Garden. If everybody says, if enough people say no, then no, we're not doing that. In the other way, who doesn't want to eat at Olive Garden? Great, we have agreement that we're not eating there, but where are we going to eat? You haven't made the final, you need to place conditions on it, you need to place other things. And that is all I have for you. Okay. <coughs> Any other items from the commission or staff? Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chair, I, I move that we adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded. We adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.